Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's take a look at my two ongoing projects that both uh, working with the aspects of orthopedic biomechanics. I work at the Department of Orthopedics at Somerville University and uh, based on evidence-based uh, medicine and research, I want to better understand bone behavior and implant behavior. I have two ongoing projects. Uh, the first is dealing with the young modulus uh, results in, of bone and the second is uh, comparison of the lockdown technique in uh, chronic acromial clavicular instabilities. The first project is a systematic review and a meta-analysis uh, dealing with the young modulus of bone. The young modulus is the elasticity of bone, and in order to achieve better implant fitting in bone, finite element uh, analysis requires precise young modulus results. However, in the literature, there, is, uh, there are controversial results for the young modulus. The young modulus can be measured by several methods. Uh, it can be measured by a compressional, uh, uh, directional, uh, and also with ultrasonic or, uh, or another indentational techniques. Um, in this slide, uh, only one thing should be noted, uh, the ones in the circle, and uh, because you can see that in the, between the same uh, bones, we have uh, differ, uh, different uh, values, sometimes in a difference with order of magnitude, and this is bad for us if you want to make precise calculations. We categorized uh, the different factors that, and, and compared them with the corresponding young modulus results uh, in accordance uh, with our hypothesis. With our PICO, we collected uh, articles that contained uh, uh, experimental uh, young modulus results values from human bones uh, with no bony diseases and uh, only English written articles. With this uh, search key uh, from these databases uh, on, on the date of uh, November, we first collected more than 21,000 of uh, uh, records and we decreased it uh, to 100, more than 100 uh, articles for full title select, uh, sorry, for uh, data extraction. So we extracted more than 100 articles from 21 countries and the oldest, oldest uh, published uh, uh, article was in 1965 and the most uh, common uh, uh, country uh, of the articles was from the USA. On the first pie chart you can see that uh, the compressional uh, test uh, measuring technique was the most common and the, and the cancerous and the cortical bone ratios are almost equal to each other. Uh, from the uh, articles, we could see that the female and the male uh, gender ratio, sorry, the female and the male uh, gender was not distinguished in approximately 40% uh, percent of the, of the uh, article, in, in the articles, and uh, in the sample condition, uh, the uh, most common was the wet condition. We collected uh, more, uh, sorry, we collected from 13 uh, bones and uh, on the numbers you can see that how much uh, records was in our uh, database and the three most common uh, bone was the femur, the tibia and the vertebra. And from these I would like to, talk, I would like to show two examples. Uh, in the long tubular bones uh, we distinguished uh, regions, the epi, meta and uh, uh, diaphetic regions, while in the spinal uh, or the spine, we distinguished the thoracic, thoracolumbar, and the lumbar vertebras from each other. If we take out a sample, then we'll have uh, three dimensional uh, values or sizes, uh, and that we uh, recorded in millimeter in our table. And also, we must not forget that the bone has an anisotropic feature. It means that uh, the the E or the young modulus is value is depending on, on uh, from which uh, angle you were taking the loading. So, you will, therefore, we made four categories, an AP anteroposterior loading, an axial side loading, and also a fourth one, and this was the uh, uh, non-defined or unknown uh, angle because many uh, articles did not mention that from which uh, angle uh, was it uh, taken from, I mean the loading. 
We also distinguish two uh, groups, the single and the multiple samples. In the single sample, we, have, we had one bone in the article with one sample, one experiment with one value. And in the multiple samples, we had several bones, several samples, several experiments, but only one result at the end. So far, we could only, uh, sorry, sorry. So, so far, we uh, uh, analyzed only uh, the single samples. So today I will show only descriptive uh, histograms and diagrams. And uh, from the single samples, I will show the axial loaded uh, sample results because they were the most common among the single samples. On the first histograms, you can see on the X axis the value of the young models and on the uh, epsilon axis, you can see the frequency of these values. On the left of the cortical bone uh, histogram, you can see a Gauss curve, and on the right side, the cancerous bone, you can see two groups of values. Um, in case, uh, from the view of uh, methodology, so how they were measured. The non-indentational and the distractional uh, measuring technique show similar uh, Gauss curves on their histograms. However, the compressional technique showed uh, a different uh, uh, picture, but it is, was very similar to the uh, last seen uh, cancerous bone uh, uh, picture. And also, we must not forget that these histograms were made from both uh, uh, cancerous and cortical bones. On this scatter plot diagram, uh, on the x-axis, we have the size of the samples, and on the uh, epsilon uh, axis, we have the values of the young modulus. Uh, the red dots are the cortical uh, bones, and the black dots are the cancerous bones. What you need to note that the cortical bones has, uh, or have a uh, group of uh, higher values in Gapascal, while the cancerous bone has two uh, groups, one with the lower, uh, 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 the lower uh, young modulus uh, value and another one among the red dots uh, with uh, bigger uh, uh, young modulus results. The strengths of this first project is its invaluable information about more than 100 articles mm -hmm. with extensive and precise detailed data collection. And the limitations are the biases that are not yet being defined, the sample e results that were very hard to identify in each article, uh, and also there were some missing data uh, that we needed to uh, find out uh, uh, later. Or according to our recent data, uh, our conclusion is that the cortical bone samples have higher E values compared to the cancerous bone, and the non indentational and distractional tests show similar but not identical uh, results to each other. And the compressional experience measured small E values uh, with higher frequencies. The implication for practice is in the new implant design and custom made implants wider for the uh, research. It, uh, we have the new perspective for the finite element analysis. The next project. The next project is a lockdown technique comparison to other uh, surgical approaches in chronic acromioclavicular instabilities. This is a, a most common injury in the shoulder girdle. It occurs in high energy contact sports. It has more than 100 techniques uh, and, uh, for therapy. And our hypothesis is that the lockdown technique is more superior uh, to the other uh, surgical techniques. According to our PICO, we uh, collected articles uh, that had a Rockwood 3 or higher uh, diagnosis of AC instabilities that were operated, and we compared the lockdown technique to the other surgical approaches. And this, the clinical implication is the improved treatment in AC instabilities. We have conducted a systematic search with this search key and from these databases, and uh, right now we are still doing the title selection from the duplicate removed uh, articles. But uh, parallel to it, we want to make, uh, to start a retrospective cohort study. Uh, it, it will be a multicentric one uh, from three centers. And uh, since the last progress report, we are still doing, uh, or st we are uh, still uh, are having uh, meetings, personal meetings with the colleagues from the other centers. So this is my two projects with the end dates of May and September. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, even that mountain is uh, still in its place, not moved away, but is, it is already shaking, I think.
Thank you very much. Thank you, nice talk. Actually, the first project was too clever for me. Uh, when I was a young doctor, I was told that you have to choose a subject uh, which is too clever to the audience, then you are a winner. So, following this uh, awkward introduction, any question from the floor? I have to admit that I'm not smart enough, but maybe he educates us. So, when, when we go back to your slide, when you show the different bones, I might understand up till the last three dots, what is on the right, and what is that? I mean, so there is a group of cancellous bones, okay, with a certain young modulus, and then there is another one. So this, what is the meaning of size? I mean, the size of what? So the size of the sample, the size of the, mm -hmm. of what? Or that just what you can study together, and mm -hmm. whether that depends, I mean, the size depends on the, on the modulus, or what is this? So, I mean, what, what's the relation, what, what, what's the x-axis? Right. Words. Thank you very much for this yeah. question. Uh, for the first part of your question about what is the right uh, three dots, red dots, right now I can't uh, tell you the answer for this. However, I can tell you uh, the, the x-axis. So if, uh, you can see that the sample size is in millimeters. As I mentioned before, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, we have the sample uh, from the ball. Uh, mostly these were cubic samples and uh, from these, we have two uh, uh, columns in the table. So there will be an x, epsilon, and z uh, uh, millimeter of uh, size of, according to the dimension of the uh, sample of, if itself. And from these three uh, uh, sizes, we always used the one that was the smallest. So, in the, so on this uh, scatter plot diagram, we have the minimum that was the smallest uh, size of the sample, so it is still uh, a millimeter, and uh, and yeah, that's that's all about the the x-axis, and uh, is it how is it connected to the to the young modulus itself? Well, I think it it is more important that the the quality of the bones. So these are cortical and and cancellous uh, bone uh, samples, and the cortical. Uh, we, we assume that they are stronger, so we know that the cortical is stronger than the spongy bone, the cancellous bone uh, in size. So it is okay that it, it is a smaller value of young modulus. However, uh, what was the, the connection with the, with the size is not yet known for us as well. As I mentioned before, we are at the, uh, at the first uh, two steps only uh, of the whole analysis and uh, and uh, as soon as I know the answer, I will tell you in the next progress report. And also, uh, I would like to show you something else, because uh, in the multiple and single sample uh, the, um, page, that the multiple samples uh, are treated differently, because we also recorded the number of uh, elements and the number of uh, repeats of each sample. So they will, be, uh, they will be used by another kind of uh, statistical uh, uh, analysis. So therefore, we could not uh, start it yet. But we already have the data, so the, uh, the biostatistician will start to work with these as soon as he has time for that. Uh, so that suggests to me that in a certain range of sample, si uh, of sample size, actually, the bone uh, young modulus depends on whether that's cortical or not. Uh, but there are some points which actually stand out, and then these are the s small sample size, whatever. Is this yeah. an artifact or this is a real thing? Uh, or the, the whole plan of this project is to identify what's the, uh, what's the uh, reason behind these uh, anomalies. So we want to find out the same thing that you mentioned, and also it's important to know that, uh, that we uh, collected uh, information not from only the methodology, but also from the gender, the, 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 the part, so from which part of the bone was it taken for, from which bone. So there are many, many different factors that we need to uh, take into account. I think the answer of your question should become from the formula of the young models, because it's 
the force that pulling or pushing uh, each other things and the area that was affected divided by the changing of the length of the uh, examining thing. So that's why we measure it in Pascal. And if we are uh, checking length, so it could be desert uh, us. Because if we are just measuring one side of, uh, uh, of a three-dimensional thing, and you're always choosing for the shortest one, there could be a huge difference in the, uh, in the results. So if you check the formula of the Young Modulus of Elasticity, then it can come out why it's different. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.